Hey everybody, and welcome to the Sculpting Live show. Uh, I've got some cool new stuff that I wanted to work on tonight, and so I've got the files and stuff set up, so we'll jump into that here in just a few minutes. But uh, checking the chat there, hoping that uh, those of you that are out there that are watching live now uh, can hop onto the chat and say hey, and that way we can test it and make sure everything is working, that uh, you guys can hear me okay and you can see me. <laughs> and you can see the screen. So um, uh, what I wanted to cover, I kind of wanted to start off a little bit uh, with some stuff that we talked about last week. I know that uh, Timothy in the chat was asking about uh, the inhabitable bubble or having some uh, structures or, you know, this kind of a thing to go with uh, some of the terrain stuff. And so on uh, my previous uh, Kickstarter project where uh, we did the bikes and bots, I had done some terrain pieces and those are available uh, over on uh, my mini factory and actually I can put the link if you want to see some of those I can put the link uh, below in the description uh, after after the show um, but uh, let's see uh, I'll make a note here so I'll make sure that I can I can get that link uh, but uh, one of the items was uh, was the inhabit a bubble, and it's kind of a, a, a modular structure that uh, uh, you know sci-fi characters can carry around with them and sort of expand, and it it creates like a little dome-shaped habitat, um, for, for, you know, to uh, you know keep themselves out of the elements and that sort of thing, and it, it makes a cool little piece of uh, tabletop terrain. Uh, and so I had gone back to the files and looked at that uh, since we were talking about it in the last episode. And so I want to open up Cheetah Box here, or Cheetah Box, or Chitu Box, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, I don't know how it's pronounced. But anyway, uh, I'm going to open this up and we'll take a look at that uh, and see the. Um, and take a look at those files. So. Let's see. Okay, so I've got the, the settings set to the EPAX E10, which is what I've got, which is the largest build plate, uh, the printer build plate that I've got. And it's a 2K mono uh, large format printer. So I was thinking about running these files on it, but after I opened it up and looked at them, uh, I thought, hmm, I, there's some room for improvement there. So I kind of wanted to get some feedback uh, from you guys about that and see what you thought. Uh, so let me open those up real quick and we'll take a look at them and I'll show you what I was thinking about. Let's see, Utilipod buildings. Okay, so we'll open up the, the base first. So I think it's, I, I'd have to, I wonder, I, I guess I can measure this. Uh, let's see, scale. Okay, so it's 71 millimeters by 73 millimeters and about six millimeters tall. So, or six and a quarter millimeters tall. So that's not too bad. Um, but let's see, looking at that across at 75, it'd be like 150 millimeters, I guess. So. Uh, once you put the two parts together all four of these parts connect together uh, I just arranged them on this build plate to, to, to print them basically on the build pr plate because on this particular printer I have um, a uh, flex plate where I can put stuff on it and it prints and then I can just it's magnetic and it just pops off and then I can pop the parts off of it uh, so uh, when, when I was looking at this I've got these tabs along the edge of the parts and they're keyed to where it's it's like well they'll fit together uh you know so this little slot or i mean this tab fits into this slot and it works its way around so basically it's just it's one copy of the part and then you can just instance it so there's like four copies of the same part but then you know you can connect it together okay so but i was thinking it would be kind of cool um if i could magnetize that or or drill it for magnets so I'm kind of thinking well you know before I go back and and um, and print these 
I may want to go back and revise the files and cut maybe an opening here and here for like a, if they're six millimeters tall let's see let's look at that again yeah it says it's like six and a quarter so I could probably get away with like three or four millimeter magnets on it and it may be kind of cool to offset them where you know this one kind of fits in a little bit and then the other one kind of sticks out a little bit and so they kind of key together in those places too so anyway so I'm kind of looking at that as an option uh, to uh, uh, kind of revise these files and, and anybody that's downloaded them already you know like from the Kickstarter or whatever it's like well I'll just upload the new versions of them to my mini factory and then you can just download them again and get the new updated uh, versions but okay so that's the floor section for that so it it fits together it's it's four parts and let's see um, so it kind of goes let's, did I did I arrange it right I think I've I think I may have to turn some of these. So let's go the other way. Yeah. And then let's do this way. Okay. Okay, all right, cool. So, and then we'll just put that in the center. All right, so there's the there's the, the full floor section. Um, I, wonder if, I wonder if it'll, I wonder if I can measure all, no, it's just gonna measure that one part. Okay, so, but that's the floor section and then, then the bubble dome part fits on the top of that. So, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what I'm thinking as far as you know revising that. Let's take a look at the. Uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and close that, and then we'll open up. What's the thinking? okay there we go yeah so okay so there's the there's the wall section so let's see if I can arrange those a little bit where let's see so that you guys can get kind of an idea how that works let's see Oop. Yeah. Boy, it'd be cool if this software was set up where you could press the shift key and it would snap to the you know where it worked like other software that would oh yeah see and it's it's flipped okay so let's see let's let's mirror it back okay there we go all right so you fit in there and let's see I wanna Uh, 
it should be 150, I think. Yeah. So let's put this guy in there. And we'll move this guy over here. And the cool thing about these is, like I was mentioned, is that the panels are modular. Um, so you you can print out, or in this case, you know, if you don't have a printer, uh, you know, we were going to make those available, you know, individually on the web store where it's like, well, you could just order whichever custom panels that you wanted. And, oh, come on. And then uh, you could customize your own inhabit a bubble however you wanted to set it up so let's see ooh, ooh, ooh. one eighty there we go and I guess I could click the little the little doodads on there and constrain it to forty five degrees but you know whatever Okay, and there's a little bit of space in between these to give it some breathing room. But, okay, so let's do a little bit of perspective. And there's there's the inhabitable bubble. Okay, right, so so there's, there's a door panel, and then there's like a window panel, and there's a blank panel where you can kind of customize this and put your own stuff on there. And then there's a... Um, uh, a generator panel so there's like a little power cell uh, that's a separate part that fits in there uh, so that way you could you know power it up and then there's another separate part that clips in here uh, that's got like a little flat sort of a recessed top area so that way you know you could put your sensor array or you know put an observation area or whatever on the top of that if you wanted to so that it's it's relatively customizable you know depending on how you want to set it up and, it, and all of this like once you glue it together or, or you know whatever uh, and there again it's like it would be cool to kind of engineer you know uh, some magnetic connectors on it where it just it clips together uh, it's already got these um, these like over overlapping keys where all of the panels fit together uh, already so you could just kind of glue them if you wanted it you know as a permanent dome structure uh, but, um, it, but if you wanted to continue to customize it, it'd be kind of cool to, to engineer some kind of, um, I guess say, uh, magnetic, uh, you know, way to put magnets or something in that and, uh, and check it out. So, um, let's see, let me, let me open up this real quick and... And then we'll get on with the, uh, let's see, I'm going to move this over here real quick, over onto my other monitor. And so, um, yeah, so I'm going to go back and, and take a look at that and see if I can kind of revise some of that sort of thing. And, uh, and then... There we go. Uh-huh. Well, that's good. It looks like it's just me at the moment. So... All right. But the chat's working, so I know... Uh, I know that's, that's going on. Uh, but anyway, but if you're catching up on this later, uh, if you're uh, watching it, uh, on the video on demand afterwards, uh, I'm going to be launching a new tribes, uh, subscription thing over on my mini factory at some point here, uh, soon, roughly, uh, probably between now and ReaperCon, which is going to be like at the end of August, uh, the first weekend of September. So it'll be sometime between now and then I would imagine I'm going to launch the tribes thing. And I've been looking at some different tribes deals because it's like when I was running the thing on Patreon before, 
um, it became very difficult to keep up with the schedule of like doing all the sculpts and things. So, uh, and having to do production and stuff on it. Um, so, uh, so I think this time when I do the, the tribes thing, uh, I'm, I, I kind of want to do some sci-fi models and some fantasy models. So you, you can kind of pick like, maybe there's going to be like different tiers where it's, it's like, okay, uh, if you can subscribe to the fantasy tier, if you're just interested in getting fantasy models and then I will, I'll be sculpting stuff, you know, that's fantasy themed. And then I was going to do like a little welcome pack. That's going to have all of, you know, like fantasy themed, uh, like terrain pieces and maybe some, uh, characters that you could use as like, you know, non-player characters or, you know, henchmen or mercenaries or something, whatever. And then, uh, then I was going to do like a sci-fi subscription that it's like, okay, well here's sci-fi stuff. And then that would be an opportunity to like, uh, fill out a little bit more of the sci-fi miniatures for a counterblast line. That's like, you know, we'll, we'll do some aliens and, and we'll do some, uh, I could sculpt, uh, you know, some more characters and, and do some things. Plus, I'm also looking at uh, adapting some of our existing models over to uh, to doing some army lists for one page rules. So um, uh, uh, Vicky's actually working on doing some of the conversion stuff on that. So and we're going to be doing some uh, test games, which will probably be, you know, shooting some video and we'll be posting battle reports as we kind of play test some of that stuff to kind of see how it works. We, I've been really impressed with the one page rules, uh, system, you know, as far as how they've got their, their stats and their, their all, you know, the structure and the gameplay and everything. It's, it's kind of got all of the stuff in it that I want in a game system. And it's like, you know, for, for miniatures battles. So it's, uh, it's, it's cool. And they've got, uh, uh, space, uh, you know, spaceship combat rules and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, so, so we're looking at, at converting some of our existing armies over to providing one page rules lists for the things like the Edo and the Niren and stuff like that, where you could take your Niren models and, and put together a thing and play using one page rules also. So, okay. But, uh, but that'll give me an opportunity to kind of sculpt some stuff and, um, uh, make some, some different and, and, uh, kind of expand our sci-fi models and stuff kind of outside of counter blast a little bit and, and do some additional things. Uh, and so I would, I would be putting sculpts and stuff on there on the sci-fi side. Um, and then I, I'd probably do like a combined tier, uh, where, you know, it's, a, it's, it's maybe like a little discount and you get, uh, you, but you get the whole thing. And it's like, uh, when you can get the sci-fi and the fantasy thing, if you want kind of all in, it's like, I want all the STL models or whatever. And so each one would have their own, uh, little welcome pack that's got, you know, some characters and some scenery, you know, terrain pieces and stuff in it. And so I've already done like a lot of terrain pieces and stuff that are already out there. So I'm, that's one of the reasons why I was over the last couple of episodes, I was doing some new pieces that we could kind of put into, you know, a welcome pack over on the sci-fi side. Uh, but tonight, uh, I'm actually, uh, we're going to be, I'm, I'm going to be sculpting on some tieflings. So, um, uh, Vicki and I were talking about it and, uh, we were trying to come up with something that's like, okay, well, uh, we're kind of working in the background on getting the counter blast stuff wrapped up for the pre-order stuff, which counter blast is still available for pre-order. So, you know, you can, I'll put the link again in the description down below and, uh, you guys can pop over to the web store if you're interested in picking up, um, uh, the counter blast stuff for savage worlds. And so that pre-order stuff is going to go through the end of May. So that'll give us an idea of like, well, how much of the stuff that we're going to need to order in order to cover the pre-orders and then, you know, order some for our own stock. Um, and then that, uh, by the time we get through the, the printing and approval process and, uh, getting proofs back and blah, 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 all the printer stuff, then we should have those available to premiere it at ReaperCon, which will be Labor Day weekend, uh, the first weekend of September. Okay, so uh, having said that, um, we wanted to start putting out some new releases and have some STL files that you know we could go forward with, uh, to, uh, some different themed ideas that w I could put over on my mini factory or you know do tribes or something like that. So the first little batch of stuff I, that we talked about was let's like, oh, hey, let's do some tieflings because I've, I've got, um, and of course, you know, I could, if I was prepared, I could show you guys what, 
what I had. But, um, but for example, <clears throat> we've got a couple of little tieflings already in the babes line. You guys can look those up or I could there again, put the link down in the description. <laughs> so, and I may, I may do that. So, uh, let's do, uh, link Del Zira and Kai. Okay. So, uh, not Ty, Kai. Okay. So we have a couple of tieflings in the babes line already. Uh, Del Zira uh, and uh, Kai, which is based on a character that Vicky was playing in World of Warcraft, which is a Draenei character. So I, I took that and, and it's, the, it's loosely based on, you know, what she had for her character. And so uh, then I had, had taken that and kind of scaled it up as a... Oh, let's see. Let's do this one so you can see that a little better. Okay, so this is the 75 millimeter sculpt that I did of, of that character. And so this is probably the, the closest thing that we have to like a tiefling type of thing already. Uh, that uh, I guess it came out a couple of years ago, whenever uh, I think uh, when I had sculpted it. And I'm looking at doing some more 75 millimeter characters you know along these lines uh but um probably not any more tieflings like right away it'll there'll be some different things uh but anyway so so i went back to the file that i have the base mesh that i had started on for this and then i i imported that uh into zbrush and kind of opened it back up and tweaked a few things and so th this is what what i've got kind of basically on the thumbnail right now so uh, the consensus was over in the Facebook group that uh, the tieflings should have a, a very Draenei kind of look and proportions to them. So in order to maintain Draenei proportions, <laughs> the, the characters need to be at least, you know, uh, that's not what I wanted. I need to open up this and they need to be at least this tall. So she's going to be at least, you know, shoulders above you know, Brack Maxter, which is kind of my, my baseline mini. And I always keep one of those, you know, like right here handy. So uh, I can check the scale and so forth. And so, you know, I, I mean, and I'm looking at him just on the tabletop and it's like, okay, well, if she's maybe like, you know, five or six millimeters taller than him, it's it, it's really not going to be, you know, I mean, she's, she's an alien thing or she's an infernal, whatever you want to call it, you know. So it's really not going to be too far out of proportions for the character or, or, or to fit in with, you know, other models in the same scale. So uh, and since it's, you know, for those of you that want to uh, download it and print it out, you know, yourselves, then it's, it's, it's not going to matter because you can just rescale it, you know, from whatever size you want in, uh, in your slicer and, and print it out, you know, whatever, however tall you want. So... <clears throat> but what I'm thinking about is that there's probably going to be three different characters in this. Um, and so I'm looking at different classes or different, you know, body types and, you know, some different aesthetics and things. So um, I, I had downloaded a bunch of reference material uh, over on, um, uh, what is it, Pinterest? Yeah. So I downloaded a bunch of stuff on Pinterest and uh, let me just, just open up a new tab of that uh, and put that over here. So, um, <clears throat> and so that, that gave me an idea of, of the, and I posted some of those over in the Facebook group and I uh, got some feedback and stuff, you know, over there. So, so that was good. Um, Let's see. Let's go back to the folder and I don't know where those are. Yeah, here we go. So, and I, I don't, I don't really want to put the reference up, you know, because it's I don't have the I'm. I'm not actually copying the art. It's basically it's inspiration. It's like, well, this is what other people have done. It's like, ooh, those are cool ideas. But these are the ideas that I have, and I kind of want to go um, 
so that I'm specifically not copying anything particular. Um, so, I mean, it, but it's kind of hard because it's like, well, it's a female with, you know, disagreed legs and hooves and stuff. So it's like, well, that's pretty common as far as the, um, the drain eye <laughs> and the tieflings go. So, uh, anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to jump into this and create a couple of different, I want to do a couple of different sets of horns. Well, I'm going to need three different sets of horns anyway, because if I'm going to do three different kinds of characters, it's like, I want them to all be different. Uh, or the horns anyways. <clears throat> so what I have uh, right here is uh, it's basically just this is um, well if I can get a spam call. Okay so this was just a test that I had done just to kind of see oh, man there we go Just to kind of play around with the the shapes and stuff and and this is basically the same method that i used in order to make the horns on the kai sculpt okay so what i started off with was this spiral object okay and this is oh man you're killing me with this center world center thing it's like oh. here we go okay so this is the baseline spiral object that's basically in the pre-built tools, right? So it's this right here. Okay, so if I go down to initialize, before I create a poly mesh out of it, I can go in and, and sort of, um, I can adjust these parameters in order to shape what I want on this spiral object, okay? So uh, the this controls the division of the, um, well, what is it, along the, well, it says S and L for the different, okay. So this is creating, you know, um, more resolution lengthwise around the spiral as it spirals around and then, and let's just go back to 16 on that. Okay, and then this one creates a resolution along, along, you know, it, it, more slices of it. Okay, so I don't remember where that was. I think it was like 160 or so. Okay, uh, and then, let's see, I don't want to twist it. Uh, the displacement is cool because that, uh, you know, you set it to zero and it it's it's basically it's all lined up now and spirals in on itself. Uh, but then you can spread it out, um, you know, depending on how far you want the horns to, to go out. Uh, in this case, horns. It's like you could be making a like a seashell or, uh, you know, any other object, you know, using this this particular technique. OK, so. So that's the the left and and right access on it it's 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 basically it's it's laying on its side like this right now this is how we're this is how we're looking at it okay but i don't want to move the object or anything because it's got uvs already mapped onto it uh just as a default and i want those uh uv uh coordinates mapped on there because uh, the default settings because we're going to put a texture on it and that's going to be important uh, in the later steps. Okay, so uh, let's see, what's this radius? Okay, so that's gonna, that's, it's gonna thicken it up, uh, which we can do later with uh, inflate. So that's not really gonna be as important. The thing that I'm looking for right now is like the thickness. Okay, so like here's the, the thickness which we can control later. And then the coverage is set to like 1440, I think is the, is the default on it okay so we crank that down and that's going to un unspool to you know to a flat plane that you know one okay so so you can do you know like a tapered horn uh you know up to a certain point and the and this sharp point that it comes to that's not good for 
printing and so we're going to trim that off later on when we get uh, the textures and stuff done uh, because I'm going to remesh this. Okay, so this is still a live object and until we create a poly mesh out of it, then um, uh, it, I, it's editable like this. Okay, so I kind of like that. Uh, let's see. Can increase the thickness a little bit. Let's see. Let's go. Let's go to about here, because the the, the curvature of it looks pretty good. And then it, it it's like I I'll probably trim it off about here, and then it looks you know it curls in up to about the center of where this spiral is. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then we're gonna set the what is it? Um, the displacement we're going to bring it out probably not very far uh, let's see I kind of want it just past this split here just so that it doesn't overlap too much okay so this this is what we're going to start with and I think that's probably going to be our best bet okay so if not, we can always come back to this and, and make another one. Okay, so what I want to do is now from this live object, I want to make this as a PolyMesh 3D. Okay, so now it's PolyMesh 3D and I can edit the surface of this. This other one, you can you can edit the surface of it, but it's not really like a live PolyMesh. I, I can't really describe what the difference is, but just trust me that you want to, you want to create that as a... Uh, as a polymesh 3D object, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna name this one Horn A. Okay, so so we know. Okay, that's this is the one that we're working with. This is our polymesh thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and save that because it's prone to crashing when I do a lot of big stuff. So, uh, <laughs> not that this is big stuff yet. Uh, but anyway, I want to I want to save my files regularly so that I don't lose any work. Okay. So now this relatively low um, low resolution mesh, which uh, which I can show here. Okay. Well, here's the the mesh on it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up the. Um, resolution by going into geometry and I'm going to divide this up so that we've got some space to work. Okay, so I've divided it. I've got it's got five subdivision levels and it's cranking at about almost 650 active points. And so when I show that again with the you can see the subdivision things. Okay, so if if I delete the uh the live subdivisions, it's just going to, you know, th these are all of the individual meshes. So that's going to be enough resolution that we're going to be able to texture this and it will show up like we expect it to. So, okay. So what I want to do is now I want to put, uh, and I have a prepared uh, texture file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the UV map and I'm going to select the resolution of the map that I'm going to use, which is 2048. And then let's see, I want to go to, I don't want to go to create because it's already got a UV map on it. So I just want to go in and select my texture map. Okay, so there's, here's all of the default texture maps. But the one that I, I have in mind is one that I got as part of a, a texture uh, set um, that's got stylized textures and stuff in it. And it's basically, it's this alpha here, which I've named horns. Uh, but it's basically, it's just roof tiles. It's like for shingles on the uh, top of a roof and I was like man that looks really cool that would look great wrapped around a spiral as horns and stuff so that's the one that I'm going to use and this is how it maps it on there now you can see that it's like it starts here and wraps it around this way okay and it tiles it all the way around seamlessly so right now the the size on that is 
is too big for what I'm really wanting to do with it. So let's see, where's my, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you go back to the UV map thing, down here at the bottom, there's an H repeat or horizontal repeat and a vertical, uh, man, H and V, couldn't tell you. Okay, um, vertical and horizontal, I'm assuming, okay. Uh, but anyway, so if, for example, if I type two into this field, See, it's gonna it's gonna add, it's gonna double up the resolution of the um, uh, the texture on there, so it tiles you know twice as much. So then if I do three, it's gonna be even more. And it's like, okay, well that looks kind of cool. So I think I'm gonna keep three, and then let's see, maybe, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, let's try and do two across, and it that's yeah that creates really thin uh, uh striations across there so let's try 0.5 and those are really big so maybe it's maybe this horn is something like this okay and i think that'll probably work and it seems like though that doing that is giving us this seam across there which I may be able to just paint that out uh, once I get the texture set up. Okay, so now that we've got this uh, texture mapped onto the object, um, I'm gonna go in and bake it on there. Okay, so I'm gonna go to poly paint and then I'm gonna select poly paint from texture. Okay, and in order to do that, you wanna make sure that your RGB channel is active all right so i'm going to go to poly paint from texture all right and now this object now if i turn now it's the the mesh is actually painted see this little paintbrush here the colors are actually painted onto the mesh in the the from the uv map or from the texture map Then I can go to masking and then I can mask that based on the uh, poly paint. So I'm going to go to mask by color and mask by poly paint. Okay, that you would think that would be the one. You actually want to mask by intensity because that's going to give you a gradient of the map across there. So I'm going to select that and you can see it, it shifted to a little bit darker on there. So now if I turn the poly paint off, you can see that the mask is is on the mesh now. So this so like if I if I clear that, you know, it it's just a mask. It's not it's not the painted texture, okay? So then I'm going to use this mask and now I can actually make adjustments on this mesh to uh, pop that texture out. So I'm gonna go over to deformation and inflate, and we're gonna start inflating that. And then that's gonna actually affect the mesh based on the, the masking on it. So I think probably about there is gonna be as far as I'm gonna wanna go. But you can see there's, there's all these really cool cracks and ridges and so forth in there and you can see that like I was talking about when you get down here to the end of it so like I I accounted for this thin part that was like really sharp at the end of the horn because I want to trim this stuff off to about here and then we'll put a little cap on that and work some texture into it so that it'll blend in with the rest of the horn but so now that we've got this set uh, I'm going to clear the mask and that's going to be our horn texture for this particular tiefling okay so now uh, I'm gonna take horn a and I'm gonna go back over to our ooh, 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 ooh. let's see what I want to do before I I do anything to this mesh is I'm gonna actually save this out as my tiefling base mesh because I'm gonna want to come back to this right here and start from scratch from scratch again, you know, using this base mesh to make another character later. So 
uh, let's go up here and save as and then we'll go to my tieflings folder into figures and this is going to be our tiefling base z tool okay so now that i've got that saved out i can go ahead and start working on this and sculpting on it and then i can i don't have to rebuild this again uh when i go on to work on the next uh tieflings <laughs> that i have in mind so uh stay hydrated folks Mm -mm. All right. So now I'm going to uh, import. Uh, actually, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and delete this part now. So delete that horn. Okay. And then I'm going to import horn A. So I'm going to insert and then go over here and select horn A. And you can see that it's oriented and it's uh, a lot larger because it's, it's it hasn't been scaled to fit this yet. So uh, so now we can go back and uh, start arranging things how we want. Uh, let's turn it around here. And actually, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and scale it down a bit. And I can bring, I can bring that in a little. And if I do that, it'll. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to inflate it too much because that's going to round off a lot of the, the the sharp edges that we want. These cool, these crisp edges on the around the horns. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to roughly position that there and then we'll go ahead and and then we'll go back out to our main folder and save that. Okay, so let's see if I can, if I can trim off some of this here and, and kind of clean that up just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna mask off this part. So what I'm about to do won't affect any of this. And let's go up to, let's grab the knife curve. And we'll see if we can, we'll see if we can trim that off. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. So I'm gonna select there's there's some little there's some little leftovers out here. Okay. So and the best way to get rid of that or the, the easiest I, that I've found. Now if you guys have got a different way to do it, you know, be sure and put a comment on there. Uh but let's let's make sure that all of our our things are grouped. These are all separate groups now. I hit auto groups and all of the individual pieces, since this is all one piece, it's gonna be grouped together. These are now a separate group. So if I hide that, okay, then I could go delete hidden and get rid of that trash that was, you know, left over from trimming that off. Okay, so now we wanna cap the end of that and kind of sculpt a little bit of texture into it and then we'll merge it all together. Uh, and then I can just do that once and then I can instance the horn back across and then we can make some more adjustments and stuff. Okay, 
So let's see what I want is let's do a sphere and uh, let's insert sphere. Let's scale that down. I need to go back and rescale those. Um, okay. So they're not so large whenever I import them. All right. Oop, boy, that's disorienting. Okay, let's see if I can place that. Yeah, that's going to get us in the general area. Okay. So now I can go in and start adjusting this little end cap to kind of fit inside of there. So that's going to be the midway point. And I want to whoop, I want to scale it down just a little bit and bring it up that way. So we'll take a quick round and maybe I'll tilt it backwards so that it kind of fits the curvature. So we kind of want to follow that curve around this way yeah so I can use I can use this crack right here as like my center point so it's like okay it's if it's following around this way then it's gonna come right up through there okay all right so that looks pretty close pretty close let's let's scoot it back and we'll widen it out just a little bit and scooch it over cool okay so then uh, I'm gonna grab my graphics tablet and before I start doing all of this let's go ahead and save it again at that point Okay, so basically we just want to put put a little bit of texture in there. Uh, it's not really going to matter because the, the, the surface of this, the area of it, is probably less than a mi I want to say less than a millimeter, maybe. Maybe a millimeter, uh, you know, across. Uh, we'll see. But uh, actually, if I've got the ruler right there, there's a millimeter. So you can see how tiny that is. That's probably not even going to print. Um, Okay, so let's turn that back off. Uh, okay, so, but uh, we didn't want to leave all that junk, you know, hanging on the end of it. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this horn down together. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now they're all on the same subtool. And uh, we'll go ahead and polygroup it. Okay. So I'm going to go over to geometry and then let's go to Z remesher. And actually what we want to do is you want to dynamesh it all together first so that it's all one mesh because right now they're still two separate objects, even though they're merged together. Uh, like if I, I could still go back and separate those out, which is not what I don't, I don't want that. I want it to be, a, eventually I want the whole model to be a watertight mesh so that there's no holes in it that causes errors in printing uh, okay so 
So to preserve that texture, I want to ramp up the resolution on what I'm going to do is, okay, so we're going to, we're going to run it at 1024. And it's kind of arbitrary, but it's, it's tied into the size of the world space that you have to go in and set up. And that's, it's all very convoluted how they've got it set up. Uh, okay, but right now the active points on this is, um, it's just a little over 550,000 active points. So I want to kind of keep it in that range. Uh, and I want to make sure that I select project here because I want to retain all of the detail that we've uh, put into that from the um, texture map. So, so I'm going to pick that and then I'm going to dynamesh it and it's going to go through and calculate. And it looks like it's, it's bam, it dropped it down to, you know, I mean like one tenth, like 10% 10 of the original file. Okay. So right now, dynameshing it, you know, it's going to, it, it creates these square mesh, you know, square polygons across the world space, you know, up and down. And what I would really like to do is if I'm going to go in and sculpt and do some additional details on there, um, I would really like to have that mesh, you know, following the, you know, they call it retopologizing re it or, you know, the topology you know, following along with, so like right now here, when you look at the squares, it's like, well, they could just go straight up and down. They don't really curve along with the form of the model. So to sculpt on it, I actually, I'd, I'd prefer that the mesh follow along with the form of the model. So I'm going to go back to Z Remesher and I want to keep the same resolution on it. So I'm going to select same and then I'm going to remesh this and we'll see what it does. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right. It's thinking, it's thinking. See now, right about now, this would be a perfect, perfect opportunity to uh, hear, you know, a word from our sponsors. Uh, we don't have any sponsors. Uh, basically, this is a Bombshell Miniatures sponsored show. So I would have, you know, ads and, and cool stuff that I could show you about. Hey, look at the stuff we have over in the web store and all that. Um, but the kind of the whole show is about that because eventually... The sculpts of these tieflings are going to be over in the web store and you guys can either snag them, uh, you know, the prints or uh, you can pop over to my mini factory and download the STL files or whatever. So. Uh, so that's the thing. Oh, come on now. Here we go. OK, I'm going to turn that color off. OK, so it's it's smoothed it out just a little bit, but. Uh, you can see that the mesh is now following along the contours of the thing. Okay, so what I'm actually, see, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave that because because this is going to be kind of small and it's not going to, it's, it's probably going to print just fine. So... We'll try that. All right. So here's our head. <laughs> and let's see how we want to incorporate that now. Because uh, I've, I've got some opportunities to kind of do some stuff. Um, see if I inflate it, it gets very balloon like. And that's like, that's not. That's not what I'm wanting it to do. So, okay. So let's, let's turn it like this. And I don't, I don't really want to make it too small. What I, what I may want to do is enlarge it. Okay. And just use like part of it. 
I may be like maybe this part. So if I'm going to do that, um, I may want to come back to this later. So let's, well, yeah. Okay, so we'll reorient that. And I'm going to duplicate that and put horn A like way down here at the bottom, just as like a extra sub tool. So in case I want to go back to this, I can snag it. If not, then I'll just delete it later and that'll be fine. Uh, but okay. So, like we did before, like we did before, uh, I'm going to mask off, where, am I, where do I need to mask it? Let's see, I want to cut that away. So, I want to make sure that all that's safe. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, let's mask it here. Okay, we'll just mask it up to there to make sure. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my knife curve and let's trim this part off. Right about there. Oh, that's not the one. That's not the one I want at all. I'm working on the wrong one. I need to go back to this one. Okay, so let's go here. Then I'll trim that off. Okay, so let's recenter that. Scale it down just a little bit, and then we're going to put this over here. Maybe kind of turn it out because I kind of want them. Let's see. Let's let's put the origin of that right about here. So now I can can maneuver this kind of how I'm looking for. See, it would be kind of cool if they were coming more forward like that. I don't know what you guys think about that. Looking pretty cool to me. It's getting there. So. Right. Okay. I'm not really going to worry about this connection point as far as like it intersecting where her head is because there's going to be a bunch of hair and hairstyle and all of that stuff on there who by the time it's finished anyway but in order to get an idea of what it's going to look like with the symmetry on or you know what it looks like across the the model let's go ahead and mirror and weld that and it's like okay well here's her set of horns so it's looking pretty cool i think that's that's kind of the look that i want to go for with this first character so that's a good start uh, okay, so we got the, I'm just going to rename that horns, and we'll go and we'll save teethlings, and let's work on the face just a little bit. Okay, so we need to turn that off. Um, okay, because uh, this is just a base mesh. You know face so I kind of want to add you know a lot more character and definition to this uh, as we're going along so let's separate the eyes out I'm gonna go ahead and keep those visible because I want to be able to see where they are um, but uh, let's kind of
kind of work on the features a little bit. Okay, so it's, that's pretty pretty low res. It's 167, so I should be able to start kind of sculpting on this a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to turn symmetry on. So, uh, and I don't really have a clear idea in mind of you know kind of what I want to do. So there's probably going to be a lot of trial and error as this goes. So we'll kind of beef this up a little bit. Not sure how you guys prefer your pointy ears. I kind of, I, I, I kind of like the Lord of the Rings shape. They they were kind of almond or leaf shaped ears, obvious you know for obvious reasons. Um, I'm not too really hip on the like the Vulcan like super pointy tips coming off. Plus, having little bitty bits of stuff sticking off your model like that is just asking for it to break. So, I kind of want to. Punch up the volume on that just a little bit. Um, this is also going to be kind of dependent on what we decide to do with our hairstyle later on. Uh, I since I don't, I'm not really sure what I kind of want to do with that just yet. I may just leave this as a. Uh, placeholder for the ears and, and then you know that there's also the opportunity to like you know if I've if I've got a lot of hair right here I could also stick one of those you know like World of Warcraft elf ears on it you know and just sculpt them as a separate bit and stick them on later so there's still a lot of opportunity to to kind of do some stuff so let's see let's kind of let's work on the see if we can start tweaking the the features a little bit um Too much. I kind of want to increase the volume so I've got open up her eyes just a little bit because this is going to be 3d printed and people are going to want to paint her eyes so that's always kind of an important thing and I may I may make separate lashes later you know uh, so that those show up a little bit a little bit more bit of a
just want to kind of crease that edge around the lower lid a little bit so that when that prints you can run a little bit of a wash in there and then paint the paint the eyeball See, you can see that creasing and stuff in the mesh right there where it doesn't follow the form. Just, just trying some stuff out and seeing what emerges from the shapes. Something like that. See, a lot of these, a lot of these forms are going to have to be really sharp in order for them to print at this size because the head's really still only going to be about you know five five millimeters tall <laughs> so uh, let's see let's run let's run some inflate out there yeah there we go okay so I'm kind of liking that look, but I really want to exaggerate some of this a little bit. Oop, not like that. Let's see, let's try this. her sharp features and let's let's bring this out a little bit almost a almost an elven kind of a look See, we'll, we'll widen our nose at the base just a little bit so that this can look sharp. She's almost got kind of a John, like a, a portrait from John Singer Sargent, the way that he would paint these noses. Uh, let's 
see. Let's put a little bit more of a crease in this area. Kind of sharpen it up across there. Okay, um, now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and punch up, oh boy, there we go. And then we'll see if we can sharpen up this crease across the top of the lip a little bit. And I'm just using the pinch brush just to pinch that. We'll pinch this lower lip too and smooth that out. Uh, I think I need to grab the inflate brush and run some inflate across the lower lip a little bit. Smooth that out. Let's see how she's looking. Yep, definitely has a lot more character to it now. her lower lip right there yeah okay yeah I think that's I think that's kind of the look that I'm going for at this point so what we'll do is let's see I'm gonna go ahead and save this at this point and let's see If you guys can hear the thunder on that yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to be cutting this short because it's just about to come a big storm here uh, it was moving through on the radar it wasn't supposed to be here until I want to say 8 30 or 9 o'clock but uh, I may wind up you know calling this here in just a few minutes depending on if it starts to <laughs> to get really bad uh, okay Okay, so there's one other thing that I want to do to kind of check how this is going to look. And uh, let's see, we want to go, yeah, we'll just put it here. Insert. Okay, we're going to put the sphere in here. 
and I'm going to do this and let's kind of bend that. And this will just give us just a rough idea. Okay, um, let's go taper, taper that out a little bit. Okay, and, <laughs> and she looks like she's got kind of a shroud on right now, uh, but do this go ahead and remesh that hair anyway let's see just to make it a little bit more controllable So I'm going to go back to the move brush and I'm going to start shaping this kind of around where I know the shape of her head is. Uh, and if I, if I have trouble seeing it, then I can always go and turn on, you know, transparency and say, okay, well, this is where, this is where her hair is going to go. Let's kind of smooth out some of that. Um, Maybe worthwhile just to shrink it down that way a little bit. Bring this up. Yeah. And this is actually her, probably her final hair uh, shape. Anyway, this is just an idea. It's just to give give me an idea of of how it could possibly look. Uh, you know, once I get the figure posed. Generally, I won't sculpt hair until after the figure is fully posed and everything anyway, uh, unless it's just, you know, kind of a temporary mesh or something that's easy, you know, to go back and edit later because, you know, hair is, it's, it's like, you know, like a cape or whatever. It's like, that's, it's one of those things that... Uh, is really dependent on the the environment you know what how how is the figure moving uh, you know how are they posed what 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 is going on with the gravity <laughs> what you know is there wind or you know are they are they on horseback are they running you know all of that and so you know all of those dynamic um, uh, forces I guess you know uh, have to be taken into account you know how when you're going to do here you can't just stick a blob on there and say okay and you know just scrape some 
some lines into it and say, okay, well, there's hair because it's not, it's not going to fit with the character of the figure, you know, uh, if it's just, you know, hanging, hanging loose. It looks like it's, it's coming through her eyes. Oh no. Okay. So let's, let's get rid of some of that. Knock that back. Okay. So, uh, but that, that kind of it gives me an idea of like, okay, well, here's some options for, you know, how that's going to be dis disguised, you know, this, how these intersections are going to be taken into account. Okay. So, uh, let's kind of look at that with the rest of the figure and get kind of an idea of how the character is coming along. So I think, she's starting to develop quite a bit of character and see that's what i'm talking about it's like okay you know in relation to the rest of the figure the hair looks weird you know sticking out of the back like that because there's no you know there's there's nothing uh affecting that so it, it should it should look like it you know hangs a little bit more naturally there so There's a little bit too much volume, I guess. What is that? VO5 hair care stuff? I don't know what. Anyway. Um, but yeah. Okay. So so we've got we've got horns. We've got her face um, roughed out. Uh, I may go back and kind of tweak a few things still, you know, in this area. And. Uh, but like this, this part is done. So I think she's going to wind up having, you know, armor and I may do some chain mail or something, you know, like a loincloth, you know, chain mail type of thing. I'd really like to see her armored as like a, a paladin, anti-paladin kind of character. So I think that's, that's what I'm going to start off with kind of on this. So she'll have armor and a sword and that kind of thing. So I'll have to kind of decide, you know, how I want the, um, uh, costuming to go on there um, and then you know is, is she gonna have you know armor you know down on her on her lower legs or you know am I, am I going to do fetlocks and stuff on there like I did on Kai or you know or just leave them you know kind of like this so I you know I don't know um, and that's, that's the cool thing about kind of working on this as I go along. It's like, ooh, as I'm inspired, it's like I can get an idea and, and I can try it out. Just like with the horns, it's like, well, if I didn't like those, I could go back to the horn that I saved earlier and tweak it some more, move it around, you know, and, and try some different things. Or just go back to the, uh, the spiral object and create a new horn anyway, which is what I'm going to do for, you know, the other two in the set. So, um... Yeah, so that's what I've got here. So I think, I think this I'm going to go ahead and leave off at, at this point, uh, having done her face and her horns and stuff, to kind of get an idea of of like where I'm going to go with the character, and then I'll move on to the costuming and stuff next. So I think that's going to be it uh, for this session or whatever this week, because uh, I can hear that it's it's already starting to rain out there, and I'm 125 feet from the house, so I've got a close up the shop here and head back up to the house uh, before the weather and stuff starts to get bad out here. Uh, when it was raining earlier, the, the power went out. Unfortunately, all of our stuff is on battery backups, in, including the printers and everything that are running in the, the casting room. So, uh, <laughs> so at least, you know, uh, the, the printing can continue. It's, you know, it's not going to be interrupted, you know, with a, a power drop or anything. But uh, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys uh, have enjoyed, you know, watching this part of it. And, um, uh, oh, hey, we did have somebody in the in the chat. Hey, thanks for dropping by and, and checking out the, the live stream. I, I appreciate you, you know, uh, stopping by and taking a look and all that. And uh I will be back sculpting uh, maybe some more tieflings again, depending on how many I can get done or how far I can get on it. Uh, next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, and uh, I'll see if I can run a little bit longer if the weather holds out uh, on the next episode. So 
Uh, thanks for uh, sitting in with Sculpting Live, and I will see you guys uh, next week. So thanks a lot. Bye.